As we prepare to receive God's word, let us join our hearts in prayer. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. The scripture reading is from Jonah, chapter 3, verses 1 through 10. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, saying, Get up, go to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah set out and went to Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly large city, a three days walk across. Jonah began to go into the city going a day's walk, and he cried out, Forty days more, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed a fast, and everyone, great and small, put on sackcloth. When the news reached the king of Nineveh, he rose from his throne, removed his robe, covered himself with sackcloth, and sat in ashes. Then he had a proclamation made in Nineveh. By the decree of the king and his nobles, no human being or animal, no herd or flock, shall taste anything. They shall not feed, nor shall they drink water. Human beings and animals shall be covered with sackcloth, and they shall cry mightily to God. All shall turn from their evil ways and from the violence that is in their hands. Who knows? God may relent and change his mind. He may turn from his fierce anger so that we do not perish. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he had said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The scene starts with Jonah getting a second chance. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. And today's story ends with Nineveh getting their own second chance. God changed his mind about the calamity that he had said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. If we would read only these 10 verses, what a nice and tidy story this would be. Second chances all around. Praise be. Amen. Not so fast. Do you remember why Jonah needed the word of the Lord a second time? Jonah hates Nineveh. And you can't really blame him. This story is set sometime between the 5th and 6th century BCE, when Nineveh is the capital of the Assyrian Empire. Back up to the year 722 BCE, Assyria had completely destroyed the northern kingdom of Israel. Its population of Israelites was exiled and scattered. And about 120 years later, Babylon, which is also part of the Assyrian Empire, does the same thing to the southern kingdom of Judah, starting that Babylonian exile that so many of the prophets in the Old Testament speak about. So the story of Jonah comes either during or maybe a little bit after 
the Israelites' exile in Babylon. The Ninevites, as far as Jonah is concerned, represent centuries of oppression, destruction, violence, and evil. They have been responsible for driving Israelites out of their homeland, destroying their holy temple, threatening their traditions and families and their entire way of life. It's not just that Jonah doesn't want to go to Nineveh. It could actually be dangerous for him. Ninevites have such a history of using violence against Israelites. But at the beginning of this book, chapter 1, God asks Jonah to go to Nineveh and to cry out against it. God wants Jonah to go tell them the error of their ways. And you might think, think that this is a way for Jonah to tell it to his enemies, a great big, I told you so, straight from the Lord himself. But in fact, Jonah is terrified by the unthinkable possibility that Nineveh might repent and receive God's mercy. And Jonah would rather die. He runs to Joppa, buys a boat ticket to Tarshish, and sets sail in the opposite direction, away from Nineveh, and away, he hopes, from the presence of the Lord. Jonah goes all the way down into the cargo hold of the ship and falls asleep. But God sends a storm to wake him up. Could have been a good chance for Jonah to turn around and go do what God had asked of him. But instead, he asks his fellow travelers to just throw him into the sea. Basically to kill him in exchange for calm waters. And they do. Sailors pick him up, throw him in the sea, and the storm stops. But even in the middle of those waters, God isn't giving up on Jonah yet. God sends the fish to spare his life. And it's from inside the belly of the fish that Jonah finally prays. He realizes that God is rescuing him even after he had tried to turn his back. And he promises to serve God with worship and sacrifice. The fish spits him onto the beach, and that's where our story begins today. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. But after that, initial call, the storm, the fish, and now this, it's really at least the fourth time that God has tried to set Jonah on the right path. So Jonah finally gets up and goes to Nineveh. I don't think you could really say that he gives it his all. There's not much to it, doesn't set up any meetings, doesn't really have that many words to share. He walks down the middle of the city and kind of indiscriminately shouts, 40 days more, Nineveh shall be overthrown. That's it. But the people of Nineveh hear him, and they take it seriously. Amazing that Jonah, a faithful servant of God, has spent this entire story trying to run away and deny God's message that he heard straight from God's own mouth. But Nineveh, these evil Gentiles, overhear some crazy guy in the street, and they jump on it. 
They believe God. They proclaim a fast for the whole city. Everyone, great and small, puts on sackcloth, a sign of repentance. When the king of Nineveh hears about it, even he joins in, takes off his robe, trades it in for sackcloth, and sits in ashes. He even extends the fasting and repentance to the animals. The entire city, human and animal alike, are ordered to turn away from the violence that is in their hands. Who knows, he says. Maybe God will change his mind. Which is, of course, what happens. God sees them turning away from evil and violence, and God does not let the disaster fall upon them. And I almost wish the story would just end right there. But would you believe that when Jonah sees how God has changed his mind for Nineveh, it's like he is back to that old chapter one Jonah. He is furious. I knew it, he tells God. I knew you are gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, ready to relent from punishing. That's why I tried going to Tarshish in the first place. And Jonah spends the rest of this whole story pouting and complaining. How quickly has he forgotten that he too had received a second chance. He received God's mercy when his own actions had led him near to the brink of destruction and death. God's grace abounds for Nineveh and for Jonah. And that doesn't mean that there's no such thing as accountability. Nineveh still has to repent. They still have to fast and turn away from violence. Jonah still has to face that storm of his own making. He still has to sit in the depths of a fish's belly. But God's grace means that healing is possible. A new way of life is possible. It means that both Ninevites and Israelites are defined not by the sum of their successes or failures, but by the steadfast love of God. And it means that there is even hope that Ninevites and Israelites can live together, that they could be messengers of God's grace for each other. Maybe right now, with all that we are facing as a nation, as a church, as individuals, Maybe God is trying to give us a second chance to. I'm not trying to say that the pandemic or any of the multiple crises we have faced over this last year were God's doing or God's punishment. Although I think it is safe to say that all of us on the human side have made mistakes and the way we handle those challenges. But what I am trying to say is that even through a mess like this, a mess of division, illness, violence, hatred, anxiety, that God can make a way 
and that God can help us to start again. So if you find yourself feeling a little bit like a Ninevite, someone in a position of relative power whose heart or tongue inclines toward violence, then maybe this is a chance to stop and to put on sackcloth. If you find yourself trying to run away from the problems of the world, if you are asleep in the hold of a ship waiting for the storm to pass so that you don't have to get involved, then maybe this is a chance to wake up and to offer yourself as part of the solution. If you are in the belly of the fish, if you're feeling stuck by your circumstances or by your choices, then maybe this is a chance to pray. And if you are looking around at your enemies, hoping that they will get what's coming to them, then maybe this is your chance to sit under a shade tree and to check your own heart. For Jonah, no matter how far he tries to run or how bitter his heart gets, God keeps drawing him back in. God forgives Jonah before Jonah ever asks. God uses Jonah to help end the violence in Nineveh. God even puts up a shade tree for that poor, bitter prophet when he is sulking in the hot sun. God keeps on giving Jonah and Nineveh and you and me another chance. Thanks be to God. Amen.
Go out into the world in peace. Have courage. Hold on to what is good. Return no one, evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, and help the suffering. Honor all people. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And may the blessing of God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit surround you and support you, now and always. Amen.